Peggy 16. Every time we make a game at Ninja Theory, uh, we try to think of the pillars of the game, the core of that experience. So on this particular project, Enslaved, we chose three main pillars, which were dramatic storytelling, cinematic action, and monkey and trip interaction. Hey! Hey! Open the door! You mother! It's quite interesting how we've had to try and make trip useful for you in game mechanics. When you start the game, the primary objective is just to get her through these mech-ridden scenarios. Then when I ask you to do something, you need to do it immediately. Okay. But as you progress, she starts to um, come into her own. You can give a limited amount of orders to trip. Hit the brakes. Locking brakes now. In particular situations, you can tell her to move. This way! Hey! If there's mechs with gunfire, you might not have any, any way to kind of take them out. So she can cause distractions. They've activated. She starts to scan the enemies that you've killed. Another way she can uh, help you through the game is to upgrade your, your weaponry. She also catches a, a dragonfly, which is basically a CCTV camera that flies around the city. I'll put a marker up on your headband display. We're using her as the navigation method through the world to help you really find your way. And when we're looking at environment traversal, we really want to do something a little bit different to what's out there. So what we've done is create these windows of opportunity. So as you're swinging through the environment, if you hit it right, you get the right kind of combo, you can string these moves together so you get a much more flowing experience. Monkey's main weapon is his telescopic staff. So the staff will extend and you'll be able to use it to attack at short range. But also, if he does a wide attack, it'll extend further and knock enemies back. Shoot them with a plasma blast or a stun blast. As well as that, another toy he's got in his arsenal is his cloud. And you can navigate areas that you weren't able to navigate without it. Trip is a very vulnerable character. She doesn't have any weapons. All she has is an EMP device, which she can use to knock out mechs for a short amount of time and run away. No combat area is there just on its own for no particular reason. Everything has a logical purpose for being there. All of the gameplay is kind of funneled and directed to lead you up to these particular moments. For example, in one particular scene, you have an exit on the other side of these rooftops. So in this scenario, you can play it two ways. You can either go around to the right and just brute force beat up these guys, or you can um, do a more sneaky way and use Monkey's kind of Tarzan-like clambering abilities to sneak up on him jump down, take him out, rip off his gun. Now you've got his gun with a limited amount of ammo and you can, you can mow down all the other guys as they run and try and attack you. Really, the whole game is a big, long puzzle about how do you get trip from one part of the world to another. So you, you think before you fight, and I think that's quite compelling. Quite early settled on the idea of having robots as the enemies. First of all, we could do a lot more robot core. We've also tried to make it a lot more tactical, so we've added uh, things called takedowns. And these takedowns allow you to, uh, let's say, rip off a gun mech's arm and then use that arm to shoot another mech or turn one of the other mechs into a bomb. The game had to be challenging, it had to be hard. It becomes a totally different experience when you play on normal and particularly when you play on hard. It really ramps up the challenge that you're going to face and how much you have to use tactics. Has anyone ever killed one of these before? Not that I know of. Oh, you did it! <laughs>